Hello and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Today we've got the Samsung Galaxy Tab S10 Lite, a recently announced entry-level or mid-range tablet from Samsung. So, as usual, we're going to start with the unboxing, then we're going to move on to the software features, then gaming, office work, decks, and so on and so on. So, as you can see, we've got the S Pen bundled with the tab itself in a white color, even though the tab is the gray option. Then we also have the SIM tray opening tool, plus a Type-C to Type-C cable to obviously Obviously charge our tablet. There is no power brick, but by now you should have at least one at home anyway. And then we've got some standard paperwork together with the new EU label, energy label as well, that tells you like what's the drop protection. So E is the worst, so <laughs> please do not drop the tablet. And obviously how easy it is, for example, to fix it as well with a QR code that explains everything to you. So, the tab itself has a back-facing camera, which is 8 megapixels. Then we've got the one of the stereo speakers on the side, plus a Type-C, a Pogo pin connector on the bottom to connect your keyboard, the memory card tray, plus the other um, speaker as well on the other side. And then we've got a power button, volume down, volume up, and a microphone, plus a 5 megapixel front-facing camera. Now, we are running on Android 15, if I remember correctly. We are indeed, and One UI 7, which means that the Samsung DeX pre-installed on this tablet is still both the new DeX and a classic DeX. There are no new software updates available either. Uh, when it comes to the tab itself, this is a 128 gig unit plus 6 gigabytes of RAM. And to be honest, it does really well, even though it's only 6 gigs. And then we've got a, quite a few intelligent features with one of my favorite ones, which is called AI Select, which basically combines a lot of other features into a screenshot. So, for example, you can mark a part of the screen, you can cut it out, save it, share it, save it as a screenshot. Uh, for example, mark it, so it selects the text that's on the screenshot as well. Very, very, very useful feature. You can then save that text or you can share it as well. You can save it as a screenshot, like I said previously. So it works really well. You can even pin it as well. So if you move to a different app or a different window, this stays pinned as well. So considering the price of the tab, which is £329, I think this feature is pretty decent on top of the regular multitasking. When it comes to unlocking the tablet, you only have a face unlock and a pin code. You also have a now bar. So a now bar allows you to set up, for example, timers, trackers, and it also shows you on uh, the screen itself. It's pretty much like the dynamic island, I believe, on the iPhones, iOS, um, and so on. Um, if you, for example, have Google Maps open and you're navigating, you can use that as well, as you can see in here. So, for example, it shows you your next direction, your next turn. Not sure on a tablet. It's very useful on a phone, but I'm not sure on a tablet unless you actually do use your tablet to navigate. Okay, so that's that. When it comes to home screen, you can obviously resize the, resize the size of the apps. You can add names to the widgets or remove them. It's very highly customizable as it is with Android. Obviously, you've got dark mode. You've got motion smoothness because the tab itself has a TFT um, LCD display, but it also has a 90 Hz refresh rate. Then we've got the eye comfort shield, which removes the blue hue from the screen, especially useful in the evening, so it doesn't uh, put as much strain on your eyes. And as you can see, you can set up an aspect ratio for the apps as well. So that's that. And then you also have the navigation bar. So you can go back to the old school days of Android and free buttons, recent back and um, home button, or you can use gestures as I am using in here. When it comes to sound, we've got the sound enhancements from Dolby Atmos, so you can adjust them to your liking as well, but there's also a built-in equalizer. So again, considering the price of the tab, um, it's 
quite highly customizable. And I have to admit that the speakers, which we will test later on, are of a very good quality and they are really loud. When it comes to connected features, connected devices, you obviously have auto switch for boards between your phone and a tablet, for example. You have continue on other devices, so you can use, for example, um, Samsung internet on both devices and then camera share. So if you've got a better camera, for example, from your phone, you can use it for Teams meetings, for example, um, using this tablet if you find the front-facing camera not good enough. You can use your phone camera and then screen sharing only works wirelessly. There is no wired screen sharing. So if you plug it in via Type-C HDMI cable, nothing will happen. Um, and as you've seen as well, we've got both options, like I've mentioned previously, for the classic decks and the new decks. I'm not a big fan of the new decks, which I'm forced to use on my Galaxy Fold 7. So unfortunately, I'm hoping they won't remove it for the tabs with the One UI 8, but we'll see. I don't have any one UI 8, tab 8 tablets yet. Now, the next one is the Gaming Hub. So in the Gaming Hub, you can adjust the performance in general across all the games you've got, or you can do it as on a per game basis, which I will show you uh, in a second. So I'm going to fire up Balatro. Balatro isn't a very demanding game, but you've got this tab on the side. You've got the shortcuts to, again, adjust the performance settings for all the games if you'd like to, but you also um, are able to do it on the per game basis. So for example, if I want Balatro um, game optimization to you know, reach performance, increase the performance, or if I want to lock the frames uh, down from 30, uh, 60 down to 20, I can do that as well, and then adjust the screen resolution as well, especially useful in quite a demanding titles. However, I haven't really had any performance issues. Do bear in mind, I mainly play Call of Duty Mobile, Balatro and Company of Heroes, um, which I will show you in a second. Well, actually right now, but yes, I haven't had any performance issues. And as you'll see in a second in the Call of Duty Mobile, I am actually playing with the HD pack as well downloaded. Um, so I have to admit those six gigs of RAM are really 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 useful on this tablet but also the other useful things so thing um, obviously on the tab itself is the exynos 1380 built-in 5 nanometer process with the mali g68 uh, gpu as you can see works pretty well 60 frames per second in call of duty mobile with the hd texture pack so do bear in mind the game is quite heavy when you download everything. I think around 14 gigs. So the good news is obviously you've got 128 gigs of storage expandable with memory cards. But uh, do bear that in mind if you are planning on pay playing any heavy games that Call of Duty and especially PUBG Mobile as well. I think it tops at around 20 gigs. <laughs> Gone are the days of small Angry Birds uh, uh, games and alike. Yeah, Android and iOS gaming is uh, here to stay with 14 and 20 gig titles. Now, moving on to the office work, because obviously we game first and then we do work afterwards. I have connected my trusty S9, Samsung S9 cover keyboard via the Pogo pin. I will have a separate video around keyboards that work with the S10 Lite tab itself, but as you can see, it's working quite well. And, you know, it's not a full-blown Microsoft Word. It is the Android equivalent. You can obviously access Word via cloud as well if you've got internet connection, but it does a pretty decent job if you need to quickly create a document, a leaflet, a calendar, um, and anything alike. And on top of that, we also are able to use Microsoft Excel. Now with Microsoft Excel, I'm going to show you some multitasking as well. So as it is with Excel, you might need to use a calculator. You can do so in a separate window, but let's say you want to use a calendar as well. Again, you can open a third window, which is always nice. And Samsung has been smashing it with multitasking uh, features regardless of how expensive the tablet is. 
Now, this is limited to three windows, but well, actually four windows, which I will show you in a second. Uh, but you can highly customize it as well. You can adjust the window size to your liking as well. You can operate on three windows, but you can also open a fourth window as well in the small window. So basically, technically, you've got four windows uh, as well if you need to uh, drag and drop something um, or uh, view it. And obviously, you can change windows as well. And then if you want to customize your S10 Lite even further, you can download GoodLock as well, which will allow you to do that using Pentastic, Navistar and so on. Very useful app. And after that, we're going to test the audio quality and the speakers themselves. So let's have a go. As you've noticed, really good quality audio uh, from the tab itself. Now we're going to test the S Pen and the writing as well, but I don't know if you've noticed there are no hiccups, no slowdowns. This tab is performing really well, considering it's only 6 gigs of RAM. Uh, we are running on Android 15, like I said at the beginning of the video. And the Exynos 1380, it is running really well. I'm really surprised because sometimes you've got these odd stutters and, you know, slowdowns in, on different tabs. But this one is doing really well. And this is why I'm probably so excited about this tablet, because I really like a good value for money. And the Tab S10 Lite is definitely a good value for money. Now, going on with the S Pen features and so on, in the, no, well, Samsung Notes app itself, you've got Math Solver as well. So the way it works is that you do, for example, 4 plus 4 and then equals and it comes up with the result itself and then obviously you can um, do 4 times 4 and so on and so on so it works really really well as you can see uh, and again it's nice that Samsung is not skimping on its AI features on even the entry level or should I say mid-range tablets um, because you've got obviously the A series as well. However, I think this is replacing the A9 Plus, which in my opinion is a very good choice. Now, as you can see, the tab itself, like I did say previously, if you've got some cases or keyboard from the S9 or an S10 FE or an S9 FE, and we're thinking about moving on to this tablet for some reason uh, you can do so freely because all the keyboards work absolutely fine and um, this is the keyboard i've bought for the s9 but it worked with the s10 fe which i've also reviewed it works with the s9 fe because they are all 10.9 or 11 inch tablets and the foam factor is fitting both so yes if you're thinking about you know maybe maybe you moved on from the s9 to a different tablet uh, to a bigger one and you've got no use for the old keyboard but you want to buy the s9 f uh, sorry s10 light um to your children or a partner or anything like that uh, you can always pass on this keyboard because as you can see the samsung um, keyboard cover is also working with the tab itself so overall as you've seen a very very good very decent device plus you've got a built-in dex so we're gonna launch dex 
Now, the good news is, like I said, you've got access to classic decks and the new decks. This is classic decks. I'm not a big fan of a new decks purely because, for example, when I use it, for example, on my Fold 7, it locks the screen after one minute, regardless of what I do on the screen. It doesn't have this nice desktop layout anymore. Um, it still allows you to open multiple windows, but unfortunately, I just want a classic deck experience, which is what you get in here. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, a very desktop light experience. Now, if I were to have any complaints in regards to the tab itself, it probably would be a battery. So, yes, it's not small, it's 8000 mAh battery. However, it lasts about two full days, which again isn't bad, but the charging itself, it does support faster charging, which I will show you in a second. It does um, support 25 watts wired charging. Um, which gives you 100% in about two hours. So two hours um, by today's standards, it might not be the fastest, but again, given all sort of uh, features you've got on the tab, it's not that bad. But other than that, it's an amazing tablet. I have to admit, I'm really impressed. So this is the fast charger that's plugged in. So around 35% left and one hour, 17 minutes left. And then this is a normal 15 watt charger, so one hour, 49 minutes. So yeah, thanks for watching another episode of Quick Expert Reviews, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!